Only weeks after the Uvalde shootings, the US has faced more gun carnage after a gunman perched on a rooftop fired on families at a 4th of July street parade at the Chicago suburb of Highland Park. Killing, just recently this morning, we were told a seventh person has died and wounding more than 36. And while the 4th of July is a celebration of the US's independence, Hollywood celebrities like Katy Perry and Bette Midler called on Americans to ban Independence Day celebrations because of the US Supreme Court abortion ruling. Well, joining us to discuss the madness that's happening in the US is the informer's US correspondent, Katie Dixon. Welcome, Katie. It's uh, crazy times over there at the moment. Certainly is. It, it feels like there's something every day, you know, to, to talk about, and it's a different world over here, like we've discussed back and forward. And definitely, uh, this is a topic that we'll always be talking about. We might never understand, but something that we should talk about to try to understand more. Yeah, it, it's it, when we bring up the Australian experience, where I think it's 26 years ago, we had the mass uh, shooting at Port Arthur, and within 12 days, the newly elected Prime Minister John Howard had instigated probably one of the uh, most successful public health initiatives it, when you look at the uh, effects of it with gun control and I think there were approximately 700,000 guns taken off the street but it wasn't just taking the guns back it was the registration the safe storage all of the other matters that went in because currently in Australia we have about three and a half million registered firearms, but we still don't have the mass killings that we see in America. Why can't Americans, it seems like it's all or nothing. It's, they're going to take all our guns away, so we won't do anything. How does that debate play out, especially in the state where you are in Texas? Yeah, Texas is definitely a, uh, probably leans more towards pro um, having guns and, and that constitutional right. I remember myself as a child seeing on, on the television mountains of guns and claws picking them up when they did that and I've had that debate over here uh you know I've had that debate with my dad as well once I moved here and and really learned more about the culture over here how they are raised uh we've talked about it before this country is a country that has for the most part been a war uh, you know Australia um you know we've helped and and we have been attacked but for the most part, we're not raised like that. America's raised very patriotic as well. And they feel it's their constitutional right, just like the abortion uh, debate that we talked about last week. It is their constitutional right, the Second Am Amendment, to bear arms. And that's where this debate comes in. It's, uh, it's tough to wrap your head around when you look at the numbers. America makes up uh, 4 or 5% of the world's population, yet 46% of the civilian owned guns in the world is here in America. And it's so hard to wrap your mind around, but there's debates on both sides. And I, I don't think it's a debate that's going to end anytime soon. The Supreme Court, uh, they've tried to bring in laws and they've just fallen through. And I think it just keeps falling back to that constitutional right. And as far as these mass shootings, it's heartbreaking. You can't wrap your head around why a 21 year old essentially a young adult would do what he did on the 4th of July and yet today confessed in detail that you know confessed to it all and actually said he was planning a second attack 21 years old I feel like that opens up another topic that a, a lot discuss especially people that don't want their guns taken away is mental health a big thing they say is the gun didn't kill somebody. No, you know, the gun didn't pull its own trigger. Uh, it's the person. And so it's this debate that I'm just not sure that we will ever come to a happy medium. But as an Australian over here, it still blows my mind. You know, you'll you'll jump in a truck with someone and there's a gun by the seat. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, it's, it's just different. It's a different world. Yeah, I still remember the first time I was in Austis. Austin, sorry, and seeing people driving along with their gun racks in the back. And, you know, that, that was frightening enough for me. Now, the dichotomy that we see with the abortion debate, where it's every life is sacred, so we, we don't want uh, women to have the right to have an abortion. But then we see children at Sandy Hook and Uvalde and that being killed. How do they balance that, uh, you know, tension between the two of those? I see a lot, 
of people commenting saying you can't compare um, and it falls back on or they fall back on the mentality of the gun didn't do the killing it was the person and I don't know I, I, you know it's hard you go back and forth you understand some points from those who want gun control and you understand some points from those who don't want their guns taken away for the most part you know a lot of the citizens that own guns they are good upstanding citizens just like drugs, they are illegal, yet they are everywhere. You can't get a control on them. And if they were to take away the guns, being that this country has got almost 50% of the guns in the whole entire world, I just don't think you can do that. A lot of people I've spoken to, because I've reached out to different people, both for and against it this past week to, to get a feel on it myself. And a lot of those people that do want the right to bear arms they do also believe there needs to be some strict laws you know you can um, buy guns off facebook you can off marketplace off things like that a licensed gun dealer has to do background checks but anyone else you don't have to that blows my mind you, you know and and but to keep a control of it i just i'm not sure they ever could do it and again like drugs you make it illegal it's still they're still going to find a way the criminals are still going to find a way yeah um i read that the majority of people are in favor of stricter gun control i think it's the overwhelming majority but they won't broach the subject the, the political uh willpower or bravery or courage however you want to frame it to actually go that first step um doesn't seem to be there we've just seen new york which supports the abortion uh, the pro-choice, but has now just overturned the uh, ban on carrying a concealed weapon. So again, we seem to be going in two different directions. Is, does this cross lines? Is, there, is it a conservative versus Democrat, Republican, Democrats? Is it blue versus red? Like, where does it go, Katie? I think it really, it is depending on the state. You know, each state has different laws. There are um, some overall federal laws, but each state has their own law. You can open carry in Texas without a license. So I could put a handgun on my hip in plain daylight, walk into Walmart, wherever it may be, and they can do nothing. Now, businesses can have signs up if a business sells more than 51% of alcohol in that business. 51% um, of the businesses, alcohol sales, sorry, you can't take a gun in there. Now, to be able to carry a gun and not have a license, you know, that's, you just wonder how, or that's why we can't, you know, keep a control on it. In Australia, everything's registered. I remember they had to be in the safe. The key to the safe had to be within a certain distance away. The police could come and check. The safe had to be bolted to the ground. I tell people that over here and they're blown away. Some people don't even know that we don't have guns and they're like, how do you not have guns? Mm -hmm. I think it's just a, it's always been a way of life over here and that's just what they know. And then when you move into states like New York, I think they are a little bit more blue as opposed to Texas that is red. So they have those different laws and uh, Texas is definitely, um, you know, they, they want to ban abortions and, and they want the right to bear arms. Now, the NRA has been in some trouble as well recently with uh, the leadership in trouble. And uh, did they go bankrupt or are they filing for bankruptcy, Katie? I, I can't answer on that one. I haven't looked into that one a little bit more, but there's lots of talk of, of things like that. You know, when Trump was president, we, we saw the back end of things come in, you know, where these big power players like the NRA and all these companies that have the money behind things and they say they're the power players they're the ones pulling the strings um I I haven't really looked into that a, a big deal but you know that is a big organization and I think behind the scenes there's a lot of things that we don't see not just in America but in every country a lot of money thrown about and and money buys things but uh it's it's definitely something that I don't think will be changed necessarily they might impose some stricter gun laws um, on the types of guns that you can have in texas you can't have uh, an assault rifle weapon where if you hold the trigger it continuously fires you can't have that a lot of people confuse that with an ar-15 and then people say well why do you need an ar-15 a lot of hunters use them to hunt hogs and things like that 
So I think there's a lot of confusion too. Um, back home in Australia as well, I've had to read about these guns. Have I gone to classes? Have I, you know, familiarized myself with it? Yes, just because I, I wanted to be able to know, you know, I didn't want to just not know what I was doing if I was ever put in a position like that. But you know, there's so many different things that I think that we just don't know as Australians because we're not raised around it. And I've been here 12 years and it still, to me, is very odd in a, in a way. I can understand a lot of things, but it's it's still odd. Yeah, and the school shootings is something that gets me. I've come from a developmental psychology uh, background and I cannot imagine the impact that active shooter drills have on five and six-year-old children being taught to get under the desk in case you hear noise. And we've just seen the heartbreaking um, four-year-old that went to a 4th of July celebration with his parents and is now an orphan. How do we reconcile that as, as citizens? At what point do we go, you know what? We mightn't ban them, but gee, we need to do something. That's a, that's a tough one. Being a mother now myself, I. I can't imagine. I've been there uh, at local schools several years ago when there was another shooting like this and they really did a lot of training. They implemented a lot more uh, security. The schools around here locally are actually hiring an extra officer at these schools. A lot of these schools have police officers. Uh, we looked at Uvalde. They actually had a very uh, intense and sophisticated security plan in place. So. I couldn't imagine, I've, I've read stories of kids from Uvalde, how they were hiding under the table and it, it just breaks my heart. But I, I just don't know, if, if that's not gonna stop it, I just don't know what is gonna stop it. And again, a lot of the, the people that are, are for guns that want the right to bear arms, they then bring in that mental side of things. You know, um, is it a mental illness? We need to work with these people, um, you know, it's it's their upbringing, things like that. It's scary. I mean, I've been there when they were doing those drills and when they're walking down the halls, firing off blanks and and the, the kids and they're teaching the teachers, this is where you hide and this is how you lock the door. And But it's almost, I don't want to say a way of life because I, I think that's a horrible thing to say, but it's just the culture they're raised around here. You know, they're raised in America with guns. That's all they know in a sense. Yeah, I think one of the biggest problems we have in today's society, we conflate what is usual and uh, define it as normal. It may be usual, but it should never be considered normal. So, uh, Katie Dixon, the US correspondent for The Informer, thanks so much for the time. Stay safe and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Sounds great. Thanks so much.